We're talking with James Trenholm, a uh, Vancouver area local uh, gay lesbian activist from uh, the 70s and 80s, I believe, but he can tell us more about that. I wanted to ask you, first of all, what it was like for you uh, growing up. When did you decide you were gay and what was that process like and did you come out to your family and those kind of details and wh where, where you're from uh, first of all and where okay. you were Okay, well I was born in Montreal West which is five miles west of Montreal and I was born on the bathroom floor. My mother I think was trying to flush me down the toilet but <laughs> anyway I survived and I made a bad grab for the doctor <laughs> and um, I think I always knew I was gay, but I, like most gay kids, I was abused as a youth. I went to college in Montreal, Lower Canada College. It was a forward school for backward children. I was, it was for men only. I was hoping I was going to be molested, but it never worked. The abuse that was worse for me was <clears throat> this college that I went to for boys was uh, you could either stay in the weekend or go home. And I used to go downtown Montreal and pick up sailors. And I made the mistake of picking up two sailors. One of them was from North Van. What, what age was this? A sailor? What age were you at this point? Oh, 15, 14, 15. Mm -hmm. And I picked up two, the wrong sailors. I see. I was given a drug that I didn't know about. And, um, what year would this have been? Uh, in the 60s, in the 50s? Or earlier, 40. 40s. 40s, yeah. Okay. So anyway, I woke up and they had put uh, cigarettes on me and burnt me and they took a beer bottle and broke it and stuck it into my side and took out a hunk of my side. So this would be your first involvement with that? No, I had many experiences. When before. did you first start being involved? Oh, it was a it. traveling salesman who molested me. At age? Oh, uh, 10. 10, okay. When did you first become a political activist of any kind? Well, I think it, it just grew because I was in the service for a long time, for 14 years, and you can't be an activist in the service. Which service was that? The Air Force. The Canadian Air Force. I was a, I was a pilot in the Air Force. Oh, yeah. My squadron was a fighter squadron, and uh, was specialty, its specialty was to take out tanks. And so, uh, getting back to uh, your political activism, wh when did that start? Not until I got to Vancouver. Mm -hmm. And when was that? 1967, I think. What was the gay scene like in, when you first got here? Well, I loved, I loved Vancouver. I fell in love with it immediately. But uh, the, and the gay community was nice, and the Davy Street was fine. I got along well with it. I think we're buggering the city up, actually, right now. What was the first gay organization you first belonged to? Well, I think it was Spog. The Society for Political Action for Gay People. Uh, who else was involved with you in SPAG? Well, um, Kevin Griffin was our, our secretary. Kevin Griffin writes for the Vancouver Sun still today. Yes, I know. Vancouver at that time had a number of small organizations. Rob Joyce had his, his little group, you know, The Gate, a gay alliance towards equality. Which was actually started by... Um, uh, Maurice Flood, I believe. Yeah, I think so. But yeah. Rob Joyce was very active and mm -hmm. very, they were very, we were more political. Electoral political. Yes, that's oriented. right. We yes. were. My feeling about it was that if we let other people make political decisions for us, it was about time that the gay community started doing something too. And that's what I tried to do. Unfortunately for me, when I was the chairman of SPOG, we had about eight members at that point. We, I suggested to them that we split up and uh, each join uh, an organization and try to politicalize it. So they all did. We drew out of the bucket of a uh, name and I got the WESA, West End Softball Association, which had 300 members. But unfortunately, what happened, uh, the other ones got so involved with the groups that they had joined that they forgot what they were supposed to be doing. Could so the, eventually the thing just died of its own. Uh, could you uh, 
tell me a few more of the people who were actually involved in SPAG. You said about eight people. I, I know that Vince Mattis was one of Vin, them. Vince Mattis was very involved, and the fellow who committed suicide... Greg Cutts. Greg Cutts was very influential. Mm -hmm. He was very good. He, he was a very good speaker, and he was able to handle people well. And, and I really miss him still. I do, too. And SPAG was... Um, uh, involved in putting on or running, I believe, uh, several West End uh, all candidates. Meetings. All candidates. That was our idea. Our idea was mm -hmm. to do that. And then what happened was uh, we also got involved with the police liaison. Uh, there's a little story I can tell you about that. Was um, we had a meeting and the deputy chief of police was there. His name was Hank Starrick. Do you remember him? No. What a wonderful man he was. Anyway, he, um, he was being promoted. He was retiring, that's what, what he So he said, this is, you know how shy I am talking to people. And so he said, this is the last time I'll be at a meeting. And I said, you know what happens? I said, we just get you guys halfway civilized, and then you leave and we got to start over with some other asshole. <laughs> <laughs> and he got up from behind his de desk and he came around the desk. I'll never forget it, because he was six foot four, I think. And I thought he was going to get, I thought my lights were going to go out. But instead of that, he put his hand out and he said, Mr. Trenum, he said, I've learned a lot from you. And he said, I've changed my mind about a lot of things. He said, if I can help you in any way, I will. And he did. That's how we got the police um, thing in the West End, you know, the office that opened for the police. Uh, the neighborhood office? Yeah, the neighborhood office. Yeah. A little bit more about Hank was... Uh, I went out on my balcony very early one morning, and I was over laneway, and I looked down, and there was Hank. So I said, what are you doing here? He said, my mother lives in that house, right there. So needless to say, Mrs. Starrick didn't lack for anything. I, went, I did her grocery shopping. I, I did everything I could for her. And he was very grateful, and we became quite close. Not as close as I'd like to, but... <laughs> but very close. So how, how long were you involved in the uh, police liaison committee? Well, it went on for two or three years. It would get, you know, if something was, somebody was attacked or something like that, it would activate again. And we used to meet for every month, but it roughly went on for about two or three years. Um, so the police liaison committee was also, in, was it instrumental in helping get the um, uh, involvement in the gay pride parade uh, yes. by police units? It, 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 yes, it, it was all sort of tied together. We, we, we put up a little bit of money for the first... Where Malcolm Crane was v involved. In the police liaison committee? Yes. yes. And um, he was also very instrumental in the gay pride yes. parade. Yes, although he was given uh, credit for having started the first pride parade, which was not true. I don't think it was. The first Pride Parade actually took place in 1981, and it was, uh, start, it was organized by a combination of both the community center and uh, the local businesses and uh, the... Uh, yeah, I was working at Buddy's at that time, mm -hmm. and Buddy's put up a truck, mm -hmm. which we decorated. And actually, Malcolm Crane didn't get involved until the 1984 one, which would be the... Um, a third, well, one, there you two, are. Three, my my memory one. is, but uh, for some it's reason, it's like my virginity, it's gone. Do you remember that year when we had an election and all the can federal candidates were uh, marching in the parade for the first time ever? And yes, we got, I do. We got down to the park, and Malcolm said, We're not going to let him talk. I no. was out, I was out there in the crowd. I'm one of the people who also worked to try to get politicians to pay attention to us in my own way, and uh, it was uh, very frustrating to have him well, suddenly, of course. suddenly do this. But he meant well. I, uh, I felt that that was uh, a bad move on his part. I think it, it may have been. Yes. Anyway, um, later on he criticized Angles and the um, community center for being uh, not representative of the gay community, for being too leftist and uh, too political, and too pro-NDP, which is echoed what later was uh, the criticisms of um, extra 
extra west when they first came here and tried to put angles out of business.